Hello and welcome to this fascinating webinar from the Nautical Institute. I am Eric Sin Kwan, technical officer at the Nautical Institute headquarters in London. I'm sure most of you are familiar with the NI, uh, but for those who are joining us for the first time, the Nautical Institute is an prof international professional body with members and branches all around the globe. Our main goal is to assist our members in professional development and lifelong learning. Uh, we also represent our members uh, in international forums and organizations such as the, the IMO with our consultative status. Sharing of information and knowledge with a goal to establish good practices for the industry is another goal of ours. And through a wide range of media such as journal articles, training, and like today, webinar, we aim to reach the wider maritime community as well because the more we know the better we lead which takes us nicely into today's topic kind leadership and uh, without further ado i will hand you over to our ceo captain john lloyd and he will uh, take us on this journey today uh, john over to you you have the con ericsson uh, thanks very much indeed and uh, i know that my our panel members will join us as well um thank you everybody for um joining us uh, today absolutely brilliant that you're here I'm delighted that the Nautical Institute has been able to uh, host this uh, webinar on behalf of the, uh, the Maritime Professional Council of the UK. Uh, it's an organization uh, which the, the, the Nautical Institute uh, plays a very active role. And so it's great that we can uh, collaborate and work together on such an important subject and hence the exclamation mark behind kind leadership um, today. And, and thank you to those, uh, not only for registering, but those people who submitted questions. And we're going to get our um, panel to address some of those questions as we go through uh, the session today. Um, but just to, to, to start us off, um, the, the Maritime Professional Council, it is a collaboration of a number of like-minded organizations um, with a keen interest in professional standards, with a, with a remit to promote professionalism and esteem within the, the UK Merchant Navy. Um, and, and all those organizations are connected with the, the, the UK Merchant Navy. And that really takes us um, into the, the, the complete global community. Um, it provides a central point for professional opinion on, on maritime matters and, and gives us the opportunity of interacting um, with government and the media and, and other outlets to address uh, important questions of today. And the advice, of course, is completely independent and, and, and expert. So uh, we, we do uh, continue to provide input through consultations to regulators uh, and, and other organizations. So that's just a quick um, touch on the, the maritime professional um, Council of the UK. Um, but today's about um, kind leadership, and it was a, a report released by the MPC uh, a little while ago, and it's been um, had some uh, conversations and consultations and a lot of feedback uh, already. A, a survey went out, and there have been well over 100 responses to, to that initial engagement. So today's about broadening that conversation, uh, giving people to ask some more questions around what it means and how it can contribute to the value uh, of, of our maritime community. Um, and, and so I'm delighted that today I'm joined by uh, an expert panel. They're gonna introduce themselves shortly. Their names are on, on the screens in front of you. Um, but thank you to my panelists today for uh, joining us, giving up your time, both in the preparation uh, and, and in the delivery today. So just to give the panel and myself a little bit of context, I'm going to ask um, Ericsson to uh, to go with the, uh, with the with the opening poll, please. Okay, okay. so we have about 25% of attendees who have read the report and 75% uh, who haven't yet. So um, it sounds like it's going to be a very interesting webinar. Okay, everyone. yeah, th thank you. Thanks, Ericsson. So, um, well, it's brilliant that we're, we're exposing this um, body of work to a wider audience, and, and, and thank you for, for giving us that context. Um, I'm going to go straight to the panel um, to uh, allow them to introduce themselves and tell them why this event. Carol, you were, you were one of the um, lead authors of, of, of the Kind Leadership Report. Please um, tell us about yourself and, and why this is important to you. Mm. So thank, thank you, John. And I'm so pleased that you and the audience have chosen to attend this webinar. I'm Carol, amateurist professor at Warsash Maritime School, Solent University, and an independent consultant. And I got involved in this project because I wanted to move beyond the rhetoric, the theory, and look at 
ways in which we could apply this to the maritime industry so to unlock a culture of kindness and to, to um, move, move towards actions it was really important to me that it was understood that you could treat people well without compromising standards and also holding people to, to account and I take a holistic view I believe that in terms of being kind is to look after the physical, the social and the psychological needs of employees while also taking a systemic approach. See, sure, company, but also I'm most interested in what individuals can do to unlock this culture of kind leadership. Thank, thank you, Carol. Well, we'll be exploring some of those uh, points in a little bit more detail in, in, in the coming uh, little while. Um, Steve Cameron, you 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 joined in the the effort of the compiling of this this report. Well, please introduce yourself and 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 your initial thoughts. Mm. Okay, thank, well, thank you very much, uh, Captain Lloyd, and greetings to all of you. Delighted um, to see so many of you here with us today. Um, this has been a twenty month journey for us, and a lot of work has gone into getting us to uh, to this stage. So your involvement is crucial uh, and very important. Um, at one of the early Maritime Professional Council meetings uh, last year, we were having discussions about the changes that were in the pipeline for STCW training. Um, and out of our conversations, we identified there was a need for more on developing leadership skills and establishing what best practice looked look like. Um, and our initial research identified kind leadership as the framework that we were looking for and as we move forward with this um, process, it all seemed very familiar uh, uh, to me. And, uh, and I realized that in, in a previous life, when I was part of the founding management team that started up a shipping line that we successfully ran to Africa for 20 years, um, we were up against competitors that had been in the trade for 100 years uh, and had more experience than us. Uh, we, we all had the same transit times and the same freight rates. So, our differentiator had to be our people, uh, their training, their mentoring and their development. And it was this focus that really made us successful. Our staff were passionate and motivated and they added value to the business and in their conversations with our clients. And this all flowed through to the su success and increased our bottom line profitability. So that's that's why I, I think kind leadership is so important, having been through this process. Oh, th thanks, Steve. Um John, John Wright, you, you've been in, involved with a, a number of companies, international companies and so on, but why why kind of leadership? Why you and why, why now? <clears throat> well, it's uh, thank you. Good morning to all. Um, I must say this, uh, it's a pleasure to be here today because this has been a passion of mine for 30 years. Um, and kind leadership, as Steve has already said, is fundamental to success of a business. But not only that, um, it's fundamental to um, achieving a world-class safety excellence culture. So my background is maritime. I've, I've done a variety of roles, both offshore and, and on ships. And, and I have my own business for 30 years, in which we taught human factors and helped companies with culture change. So that's my background. And this subject's my passion. So you're all very welcome. And I really hope that today, with your help, we can take this forward rather than it just being a talking shop. Thanks. No, no, thanks, thanks, John. And and Dave, welcome, welcome to you as well. You you um you do a lot of work with Chirp. You engage a lot of people. Um, we see a lot of your profile on, on on LinkedIn and other platforms. Um, and you know you're doing a lot of work in this space. Tell us a little bit about yourself and 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 why this is of interest to you and Chirp. Thanks, John. Uh, hello, everybody, and uh, thank you for your participation in this um, webinar. As John said, I'm Dave Watkins and I, I work for Chirp Maritime. Um, I'm delighted to be invited to be part of this uh, kind leadership panel. Um, and I hope to provide some of my thoughts on kind leadership based on my maritime experience. Um, but I'm equally excited to hear more from you on this subject and what your thoughts are. Um, I, I believe that I've practiced some form of kind leadership during my 28 years at sea with my 12 years in command. And to see the industry now considering 
adopting the concept um, of kind leadership is very exciting. Um, if it helps transform um, safety culture and crew well-being, then it has my total support. So that, that's where I am on on kind leadership, a big support. No, well, thanks for you all. I mean, they're just the opening remarks, and thank you to. Two things. Firstly, to uh, all of our audience uh, who are here today, you have got the opportunity, as Ericsson said, to uh, to ask some questions. Uh, those will be uh, filtered through to me. And I've, I've already had some th come through, so I want to move straight to uh, the sorts of questions which are coming from um, the community. Um, and, and it's great to get your input. So, so thank you very much for that. Um, Dave, I'm going to stick with you because uh, you were talking about your engagement and the fact that you've got some experience firsthand on this. Um, and it, it links between kind leadership and, and the well-being of seafarers. But just tell me about your thoughts in, in you know, where, where's the link there between kind leadership and the well-being of seafarers? Well, you know, based on personal experience, a ship that's operated well um, with a good leadership structure in place, Mm. Um, generally creates a much happier ship where the crew are trusting the leadership. They have a, the trust is a big component of kind leadership. Um, and there, there's a welfare um, benefit to this. The, the crew feel happier, they feel supported. Um, and to be honest with you, it, it, will, it, it will actually improve not only safety, but uh, the bottom line for the company. Um, you know, it's probably, I, don't, I don't normally mention too many things about profit, but in this case, this is a, this is a big plus. Um, I suppose if you've got a happy crew, they're working well, you've got re retention of the crew is, is vital. Um, and it's, it's great for the company to see that you're not having so many changes taking place. Um, that means there's less recruitment going on and your experience within the organization is increasing all the time because you're not losing people because they're dissatisfied with, with the way the company's operating. So, you know, it, it is a really powerful force and it, it, it sort of engenders an esprit de corps within the organization on, on board the ship. And it's, it's my ship, my company, the way we do things around here. You know, it, it's that sort of feeling you get um, when, and you, you know, if if you're happy, I, I suppose I can say firsthand, and I've seen this firsthand, where in times when seafarers are being snatched from by other companies for a thousand extra dollars sign-on fee or a hundred and a hundred extra dollars a month in their from their basic on their basic wage, it's the spouses of the seafarers that have said and intervened, you will not be leaving that company. Otherwise, there'll be, there'll be trouble. Uh, uh, I've uh, actually heard uh, I've uh, actually that. Thank you. Thank you for that. Let, let me just broaden the, the, the question a little bit, and I'm going to direct it towards uh, John Wright. Um, what, what does that mean from, uh, you know, we, we spoke about the welfare, but how does that translate into the operation bit on, on board the ship? You know, why, why are people going to respond better in that context? <laughs> well, um, thanks for the question, John. Um, to, to answer it, I've, I first have to just speak briefly about kind leaders uh, again, uh, because they always think about how their people want to work, what motivates them and what inspires them. And when we humans see that we're genuinely cared for, as uh, David's just alluded to, um, we will tend to go the extra mile. Uh, when employees feel valued, they then feel part of a family and they feel listened to and they experience empathy. All of this is backed up by um, the, our, the results of our survey, by the way. Um, and with efforts, with effort, this results in effective teams um, who are committed to achieving common goals, enhanced communication, better in overall involvement, uh, increased enthusiasm, people tending not to leave you, the training costs therefore uh, don't go up and sickness absence is reduced. And the consequence of all of this is, as has already been mentioned by two of my colleagues already, is efficiency and safety excellence, 
which are two sides of the same coin anyway, uh, deliver straight to the bottom line while sending more people home in one piece every day. And all this stems from this kind leadership being exercised at all levels, at all levels, from the boardroom to the deck plates within individual organizations and within the hallways of industry regulators. So I, I, I have a limited mind scope here, um, John. So I, I want to bring you back to a conversation we were having before we came on air. And that was about, you, you mentioned something about people working within that sort of supportive environment would be much more willing to speak up if they saw a mistake being made. Just, just, just tell me your perspectives on that and why that's important. Well, yeah, that's absolutely essential. Um, one of the, it, 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 when you get right down to it, this is about change. And, and as um, I, I actually um, know that change is really difficult for humans and, it, and that's why it can take a long time. One, one uh, firm I helped with took 10 years, but, but it delivers like nothing else can. Um, the, the first, as has already been mentioned, trust has to be built up. Once we've got there, then people are willing to 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 speak up. But but it takes a devil. It's a devil of a job to get to level five in 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 a, a culture, a safety culture. But but it's it's so worth the effort because then you're getting all of these learning events or learning opportunities sent in. Um, uh, one of the things that happens, by the way, is there's a panic that suddenly we're getting all these near misses. We prefer learning events uh, coming in. But actually, that's a sign of health, not a sign of suddenly having all sorts of uh, difficulties. And then people start to trust and you learn from these things. And this has this affects every facet of the operation. Um, people won't leave you. Um, the quality of your people, I remember going through a, 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 a ferry terminal where, where this had been going on for about a decade. And the, you could almost reach out and touch the culture, the change. And lucky for me, the, the terminal director was there. And I said to her, what I've just said to you. And she said, oh, she smiled. She said, John, you've no idea. She said, you should see the, the, the CVs I'm now getting, the quality of the people. I'm having to turn away. It's unbelievable. And remember, this is a firm when I first went there that were ashamed to work for them. They took their uniform off when they went home for a, 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 to, a, if they were going to have a pint on the way home. It, it just it delivers on every level. But I should end by saying it, it delivers people going home in one piece. And that's priceless. Yep. John, thank you for that. Steve, um, in, in, in the context of um, the, the leadership, do you, is this um, does this apply to one nationality? Is it, is it a broad brush thing? What what does it mean for the uh, when we're thinking about ships, huge mix of international uh, people and cultures? Does it translate cross gender, cross nationality, cross religion? Mm. Uh, um, there's no reason why it should shouldn't because we're talking about human beings, John, and everybody has the same everybody has the same basic needs but we did do uh quite a while ago uh, uh, a study for one of the global container terminal operators that was looking to expand their footprint and we did 100 interviews across 30 terminals in 20 countries so we captured a wide geographic and cultural spread um and as well as establishing that there was definitely a link between c-suite executive salaries and the tu throughput of the terminal uh, we also established that the most satisfied employees were not the ones that were paid the most, but those that were well trained and where their management efforts were recognised and appreciated. So that so that was across a broad geographic region and across uh, across many different uh, different cultures. So the answer is the answers are, are big and loud. Um, yes, and kind kind leadership encapsulates. Uh, there are obviously very strong links uh, between kind leadership and emotional intelligence, but it's also about social intelligence and it's about cultural in intelligence um, and it's about um, uh, valuing and respecting the people that you work with. No, thank, 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 thanks for that, Steve. And, and, and Carol, I mean, presumably if we're not all doing it, there must be some barriers and, and, and Stephen's asked a question um, from the audience about, you know, what would 
what would you consider to be the key barriers to kind leadership and how might we overcome those? <laughs> Yes, I mean, I you know, it's it is complex, and I think it is imperative to to recognise that it is not easy because it does require, as I've said in the introduction, systemic change, but also there has to be a motivation for individuals to change and permission to be, be kind and to see that the, the benefits and those of you who haven't read the, the report um you know do after the webinar go to it because what is so compelling are the um the, the words of the, the respondents who you know are very much able to articulate what kind leadership looks like what it doesn't look like and that they do talk about time being a barrier. They talk about a, a culture that um, do, doesn't a, allow for it. Um, and what they talk about with some feeling is where bullying, sexual harassment is, is rife. It is not challenged. So, um, you know, the company may be quite performative in saying, you know, equality, diversity, inclusion, we're all over that, yet the reality on board is, is quite different. So I, I think um, one barrier is where people, instead of being an upstander and challenging bullying, harassment and poor treatment, unfair treatment, they, bec um, they become a bystander and they collude. And, you know, I know my um, previous um, careers were in the NHS as a nurse in, in education so it's not particular to maritime but it comes from the top down but it also comes from the bottom a critical mass who again say people deserve to be treated well that doesn't mean to say that standards should drop but it's in everyone's in interests and I would like to kind of add to that um, one thing that we want to do so so badly, and the report is just the beginning, and why you're all here in the audience, is to help us begin to measure the impact of effective leadership training, uh, cadet curriculum, as 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 well, but also which is able to quantify commercially, but also in terms of. Um, well-being, the benefits of, of kind kind leadership and how it can be absolutely transformational. No, well, thank you for that. And you, you mentioned training and that there's, a, there's an audience uh, question from uh, Teresa. Uh, I'm going to come back to you, Carol, so don't hang up. Um, and um, she, Teresa makes the point um, that we already have um, leadership um, in, in the STCW, well, in, in certainly in, in, in the UK, we, we, we focus on it under, under the human element, leadership and management and so on. Um, do you think this is something that should be stronger in STCW? Or is it there and we're just not doing it very well? Or, or, or maybe we've got the perfect answer. What, what, what's, your, what's your take on that? <laughs> Yes, I mean, um, I previously worked at the MCA as Assistant Director for Modernising uh, Maritime ed Education. So I, I can see both sides. But what I will say, you know, we need a regulatory body. What I will say unequivocally is SDCW is a baseline. Um, it needs to be more aspirational. But the good news is with the review upcoming ne next year, there is an opportunity to go above and beyond. I, I think the problem that we have that um, with soft skills, um, and I use that term very positively, it is sometimes hard to quantify and to measure and to demonstrate in the way that you can with technical skills. So what this needs is a whole uh, approach to how we teach, how we learn. You know, I'm a very firm believer in it's not classroom learning that will save us. It's work based learning. You need both working in in synergy but some you know um you know looking at the kind of training or what's needed is it bespoke to a company or is it leaders who are just becoming leaders not one size fits all our cadets will need something different so you know i'm gonna say that as an educator we need to shake some of it up what i would say you know some very good 
courses it, it exist. But if we focus solely on STCW and um, outputs rather than delivery and measuring um, the impact of those training programs, we won't get any anywhere. And if no. anyone in the audience is interested, I'm you know happy to talk more about it offline because it's a particular passion of mine. No, thank, thank, thanks, Carol. You mentioned the the importance of being joined up there, and and John Wright, you you mentioned um, about um, culture and and so on. And one one of the questions um, from from Brendan is, you know, is is sure management included in this in, interaction, and and how do you make sure that it sort of um, I'm not going to call it a divide, but in bridges between shore operations and chipboard operations. Um, what, your thoughts <laughs> my thoughts are that when we used to teach crm be before it was called helm we did it for many years with the use of uh, full mission simulators our policy was to ask clients to invite uh, senior managers directors marine superintendents to attend the course we'd have one or two of that, those and then a mix of deck officers and engineering officers and that worked really well because as well as um, tackling the change behaviors on the bridge and in the engine room and the interaction between the two, it also gave everyone an opportunity to talk to one another. And an amazing amount of misperceptions in both directions, both from shore to ship and back from ship to shore, were put to rest over a coffee cup uh, informally or even a beer mug and a dinner in the evening, better still. Um, and formally during the course. Uh, and, and that was a deliverable that's so important because some of these actions that need to be changed on board can only really work if, the, if it's set from the top, because a culture is set from the top. And, and so when they did that, there was almost, well, there was universal approval of this process, both from the officers and from the attending managers because exactly what you've just said this chasm and i call it a chasm deliberately that often exists between um the ship and the shore side uh, is breached or bridged excuse me and and that's huge and it's a huge contributor to that culture change and business improvement everything improves exactly as steve cameron explained in his africa days um on on that shipping line that was one that was a one team approach uh, and when steve and i have spoken offline he said, "We didn't know how we didn't know how good we were. We, we didn't know the experience until <laughs> so now. Wow, that was a wow moment. Looking back, uh, so, so let, that's let, why let we're me, all on the same page, John. Let, let me pick up that comment with Steve. Tell us about some of the characteristics that made you go wow, Steve, to what you were achieving, and 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 what what were the enablers to that? Mm. Um, this it's called I think it's called the benefit of hindsight, John. I mean, we did we did what we did." When um, I was one of the first 10 employees, and by the time we'd finished 20 years later, there was 1,200 of us at, um, in offices in Europe and in Africa, and the ships that we'd acquired and purchased and crewed with African, very effective African crews too. Um, so with the, with the benefit of hindsight, uh, it, it, it was about sharing this common culture between the sea staff and those of us ashore. Uh, uh, and every vessel was visited. Um, every new hire had to do a ship visit. Every sales manager had to do a rotation. Every management trainee had to spend two months in Africa, or if there was a coup, it would end up being six months. Uh, and and um, uh, and so everybody shared that sort of common culture. But as John John was saying, you have it. it it, you have to get it right in the office, and it and it needs it needs that leadership and involvement, and this, so that both sides understand each other's problems and work together as a as a team. Um, and we did some we did some work for a, a a small shipping line in Canada that and reviewing their promotion assessment processes because they promoted somebody to master and he'd had an accident on his first voyage. Uh, and we looked at best best practice uh, and with an an interview that what I consider to be the top uh, 12 of the top shipping lines. And we found that in their cadet training and other training that 
those companies that were successful were building joint teams between their seafarers and their people in the offices office ashore and they were giving them common problems to solve uh, so that they were working together and as a consequence of that you got a much more rounded solution to the problem and you got people that understood each other's uh, uh, business interests and you you brought you were building Build, building teams to, to, together to, to solve problems to get together and, and creating creating that really important common bond. No, thank you for that. And, and uh, Waleed uh, m mentioned a question here about how to enforce ship owners to practice kind leadership on, on their seafarers. But I think you're, you're, you're advocating here a different approach. It, it, it is about building a combined team, um, which which uh, it can produce some good results. Uh, I am going to come to some difficult questions in a minute, um, but before we do that, Dave, um, Gareth, Gareth uh, has, has made the point that um, that one of the key points from his perspective of being um, uh, an effective leader, a, a kind leader, if you like, um, is, is about um, being approachable um, and that one of the key characteristics is, is generally being a good yeah. listener. Dave, what, what, what would be your, your, your thoughts on that? <clears throat> Uh, right. Um, well, at the beginning, I did say that I felt that I had some of those qualities in, during my tenure as master in that. And, and I think good listening skills are, are crucial, actually. Um, it, um, I, I, I say that as a, as a Samaritan volunteer, actually. So I do a lot of listening in that way. So, um, but it, and, and the power of silence as well. One of the things we say, keep quiet and just listen to what the crew are saying because the messaging is there and don't interrupt. And no matter how difficult or whatever they're saying things or even confusing, there's a message there. So give them time to listen to them. And that that will and bring them into the office, sit them down as the master or if the chief engineer do, do likewise. Um, and that will that will have great benefits, um, and, and that will spread back to the rest of the crew. That you can go and knock on the captain or chief engineer's door; it's not a problem. And you know, and and just offload your, your concerns. When you're offloading your concerns, all of a sudden the weight off you is lifted, and and that that then goes back because the crew talk and everyone feels that oh that's interesting. We never had that before. So you know, as, as a practitioner in that field. I, I wholeheartedly agree that listening skills are uh, paramount. So, so I can't see who put this question in actually, but d does that mean it's a, a fluffy subject and lacks the nuts and bolts, or or is it more more significant than that? <laughs> Sorry, Dave, I'm still with you. Yeah, no, it's it's, it's definitely not a fluffy subject. Um, you know, uh, you know. So if you if you, for instance, um. A lot of people have a have a sort of a thing about well, if there's an emergency, what 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 happens in an emergency? Um, you know, and and in an emergency on board the ship, you want the clear, calm head. You want all your team to be working and trusting you, and you trust them. Um, in that way, you'll you'll easily well, you'll you'll not easily, but you will resolve a situation, especially if it's extremely difficult. Um, and 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 this sort of um the kind leadership approach especially in an emergency situation dynamic fast changing situations um will will shine through it, it, it will be something that um i suppose using that word because if, if it's a long drawn out thing and, and there's a lot of pressure on on the crew and the master and the chief and you're going to have to have a little bit of empathy there to understand their plight, what, the, what they're going through, and what, and they understand what you're going through. And many people do. They often see it in the master's face, the chief's face, when there's a big issue, and and they they go the extra mile for them uh, to to make sure because they see they're they're struggling, and um, you know, and I, and I have struggled, and and thank God it's been the crew that have actually helped me, especially if I've made a few mistakes. Um, I've got the um, the chief officers saying, uh, do you think you should have, I don't think you should be doing that. Right, thank you very much, Mark, you know, um, using a name from the past, an actual name. Um, brilliant, thank you. And, you know, so you think to yourself, crikey, I've got my crew with me. This is really good. And that's, that's the most powerful force master or chief can have. 
on board a ship. I mentioned the chief a lot because I think the two are completely integrated. Um, I know the master has overall authority in that, but the chief engineer needs to be brought in on this level because of, of, of his responsibilities or her responsibilities. No, thank you. Jo John, John, you shook your head rather rigorously when I used the word fluffy. What, what was going through your mind? <laughs> Uh, well, I, I, Dave, Dave said it exactly. I mean, this this um, company I mentioned, where a kind leader led, you know, led this change, this ten-year change. Um, he had all these necessary a attributes, uh, and it, if any of these are fluffy, then I'm a Dutchman. Such as providing direction, inspiration, guidance, but at the same time exhibiting courage passion, confidence, commitment, and ambition. Sometimes, you know, we hit serious bumps in the road as, as we made these changes. I say we because I felt I was part of the family. But it was he that was the driver. That's crucial. You have to have a leader of this uh, ability. And sometimes, you know, he had to put his rainwear on, in inclu including, uh, uh, you know, the whole full Monty rainwear against the gale because we hit bumps in the road and we had to backtrack a bit because you have to take your people with you or, or you're wasting your time. Um, but this courage, uh, courage is the word I'd pick out in particular, uh, and passion and drive paid off. Um, you started with asking about the, the finance. Well, I'm going to tell you, this firm eventually saw a 40 million Canadian dollar improvement on their bottom line with a combination of operational and health and safety savings. Well, folks, that's game, set, and match. Is it easy? No, but it rewards like nothing else can. Nothing. By caring about your people. Um, and and that's not fluffy. Right. That's why okay. I'm uh, so, uh, shaking my hand. Head no, no. Well, 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 thank you for shaking your head. Um, let's, let, let's get into some more um, difficult questions. The reality is that shipping is an incredibly competitive financially aggressive business we have a code of uh, employment in, in which one of our respondents uh, name of alan um raises the question is kind leadership consistent with a 91 or 90 hour working week along with all the other distractions um and we know we know that the logging of hours is not a reliable uh, form of record keeping. Um, you know, the research is incontrovertible on that, and, and the Nautical Institute is working with the World Maritime University to support that research. So we need better record keeping. But going back to the point, John, um, I'm going to stick with you um, because you, 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 I think that organisation you were working with would probably have a lot of work going on. Um, there's this regulatory framework which allows. You know, how does that how does that match up with kind leadership? What what do we do? <laughs> Well, that's a great question. I know who asked that question, and we we talk about it a lot. He's a member of the Maritime Advisory Board of CHIRP along along with me, and um, and Dave Watkins sitting there. I mean, how many times have we brought up the word fatigue, David, when we're analysing the incidents that come before us? So I don't have a silver bullet for this. My my opinion, though, is that the regulators just have to tackle this. They just have to uh, get on top sides of it. And at the end of the day, uh, if and when people are doing 90-hour weeks, you don't have to be particularly clever to understand that that person is a risk to himself and to his colleagues and to the ship. So it's the exact opposite. Who, uh, to you out sitting listening, I know you've all got fantastic uh, detectors of nonsense. It is nonsense to try to... Um, to try to say you can work that kind of sh that shift system at the same time, promote kind leadership. But I repeat, if it's done well, and that would include hours of work and hours of rest. Oh, and by the way, you've just reminded me, I have seen that myself on courses where they cook the books regularly on their, on their log keeping of hours of rest. Regular as clockwork. And the officers would tell you in confidence. That's some years ago. I'm hoping we've made progress. But from the question, it doesn't sound like we do. We have. But the answer is we just have to wrestle it. And that's why we can't do this. We can't take this whole process forward without the regulators, our regulators at IMO and in our individual um, uh, bodies, uh, country bodies like the MCA. We can't do it without your help. If any of you are listening, we need your help. 
because uh, it needs to be wrestled to the ground, this one. So, so it's broader than the companies on shore. It's broader than those on board the ship. It, it's the whole maritime community needs to be on board with that. So, th so thank you for that. And uh, Catherine, you, you put in one of the questions before we started. I hope we, we've addressed the bit about business benefits. Um, but Carol, um, the point that Catherine made was that kindness is a personal value. Um, what is it that employers um, can do? What, what processes can they adopt to ensure kind leadership throughout their own organizational culture? Um, I mean, the first thing I, I, I would say is um, that it's not a personal value. I think there are characteristics um, which are fu fun fundamental um, to pro professional life and, and, and you know, be, being a, a, a human, you know, it'd be compassion, practicing inclusively, cooperatively, holding to account, giving constructive feedback. I, you know, it's not a, a, a choice whether you opt in or out. It, um, it, is, it is essential. But I believe the question, and correct me if I'm wrong, John, was what um, can employers do? Um, and yep. listen, li listen to your people. You know, we, we did that with our survey, 100 plus responses. And they were they were realistic, but they were informed, and you know it was often quite quite simple things that would make mm. such such a difference. And that could be something like you've come off a long flight and you're put straight to work. Well, you know what could possibly um, be um, healthy about that? In my introduction, I talked about um, the physicality aspect of, of, of kind kind leadership. Um, and I think, you know, employee, employees ca ca can listen and they can start gathering the evidence. They can do consultations with, with, with staff or certainly with the leaders of teams. And, you know, Dave's talked about the importance of listening and really listening, not entering into a consultation, which at face value ticks a box, but actually there's no intention of doing something. And, you know, my, my colleague jo John Wright and also Steve Cameron about mapping the, the benefits of treating people well um, with the, um, you know, what that means for company profits and retention. And um, also, you know, you want good, good people. But I think what employers can do is to for those who are in leadership positions to support them because that is a very lonely role and they need to practice kindness to themselves but also be supported by others um, because if you know um, you're like a sponge you're absorbing everyone else's um, you know um, concerns whether it's bad news from home a sick child or so you know someone's mental health or they have post-traumatic um stress disorder following an unpleasant sexual assault um you know there are so many things it's very hard to answer those kinds of questions but i also go back to something which is really important to me because it can feel very discouraging and we can all become very cynical or companies won't change they're all about the bottom line it's about asking what can we as individuals do no well thank you for that and 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 i think a couple of points the uh, firstly john john said earlier there is no single silver bullet to this uh, and and one of our audience uh, talking about small steps um brendan he, he remarked that uh, a, a a chief exec selected a vessel and then a crew member uh, and would make a call um, once a month to talk to someone and just ask about their family and how they were doing and that became a bit of a buzz around the fleet oh who's he going to call next and what am I going to tell them and so on so right. you know I imagine that for starts to form a little bit of a culture and expectation uh, and a positive environment um, so no no thank th thank thank you for that yeah. um, I'm going to let uh, any other panel re respond to to this and if you don't I'm going to pick on someone um, and, and the question comes from Penny. Uh, why is it called kind leadership rather than good leadership or positive leadership or best practice leadership? Uh, another, um, uh, Christina wrote, wrote before, um, sustainable leadership. Um, who, who wants to have a go at, at that? 
Um, oh, everybody. Um, Steve, you haven't spoken for a while. Um, and I'm always, always curious what you're going to say next. Um, <laughs> thank you, John. Um, well, uh, uh, as part of this exercise, we've done some research, um, as you would expect. And whilst it's a fairly new topic in the maritime industry, kind leadership has been around for at least 25 years and there were books written on it that long ago about the benefits of it. And people like Forbes uh, and its council of members um, are saying that uh, kindness is not a weakness. It's identified as a strength and it requires integrity and it encompasses strong principles such as honesty and compassion. And an organization on research into people's characters called VIA uh, is used by companies such as Coca-Cola, IBM, PwC, and even the US Army. So kindness is a way of differentiating a form of leadership from others. And I have to admit to the, the lady that asked the question, when we started on this work, I, I was quite hesitant at using the expression kind in front of the word leadership because I wasn't sure that it was right. But the more research we did, the more convinced I became that kind leadership was exactly what we were talking about as a differentiator. And, and, and kindness is not a weakness um, because of all the strengths that we've just identified. Mm. No, thank you. John, did you want to add to that? <laughs> Uh, no, I think that that's that's it. It's right on the money, what Steve said. Okay. Oh, lovely. Good. Thanks very much. So um, we, we were talking about the international dimension um, earlier on and uh, just a comment from uh, Dr. Uh, Dr. Nasser, um, who, who trained cadets from, from the Middle East, uh, right across the Middle East. But um, he, he was using colleges and centres uh, all around the world, from Australia to the UK, so uh, a, a general genuinely a global impact and, and, and his students uh, under his kind leadership are, are now in le corresponding leadership maritime roles uh, right across the, the Middle East. So uh, we, we thank you, Dr. Nasser, for the contribution uh, that you've made to, to the industry and, and continue to make. Um, is it something, we, we've spoken about profitability, but, you know, when, when we look at performance often organizations work to kpis and and you know some statistics to to back it up so um steve stevens asked you know to what extent is kind leadership visible as a cultural norm without looking at the you know retention records turnover and, and, and so on um john and maybe that sits with with your experience uh, when when you were working with an organization and you spoke about improvements to the profitability but what were the steps along the way that you you sort of saw becoming visible <laughs> well the steps um one of the things we discovered when we were teaching um crm which by the way is, is that the simulators provide all the experiential learning so they they, they they're more or less teaching themselves by asking uh, what, what, what's, what are you looking at here? And the, the playback was very important. <clears throat> However, what we learned was even when we'd had um, people really in, improving in the course of the, the week and, and, and their eyes lit up and, and, and all the rest of it, it's, that was satisfying. But what we came to realize is it's not enough. <clears throat> and so what we had to do, <clears throat> what we advised clients to do is to train mentors to go on the ships um, to coach the behaviors in and make it really crystal clear that in this organization this is how we do things uh, and do it in a gentle manner a non-threatening uh, uh, coaching manner um, because what i noticed when i went back on one ship where a particular master had done very well on the, uh, some six weeks previously is Without him even realizing it, he'd been subsumed by the culture of the organization and had more or less reverted. Um, and a lot of the learnings had just gone poof, so the training dollars had gone down the drain. And I explained to the client, you need to train these behaviors, or, sorry, coach these behaviors in, in this non-threatening way. Um, but there will come a time after, say, six months to a year, where uh, you might, after having tried every which way, to free up that particular master or chief's future use an old expression um, but that's not your first port of call you want to coach these people and you want them to come to the party and once the, once a, um, a cup the chiefs and captains re realize that crikey the, the company's really serious about this I better shape up uh, 
pay attention and then and away away you go and then it becomes the way we do things around here um and dave watkins and i see these especially david he goes through all these reports that come into chirp and you can almost see straight away i don't put words in david's mouth but you can see straight away when an organization has um adopted a lot of what i've just mentioned and by the way that that also applies at the top you know um with the management teams you can train management teams um, on a simulator and they don't even have to be mariners um, because it's the same learning uh, experience for oh you didn't communicate you didn't use close loop communication you, you all the learning that you, and, and one last thing when i learned this stuff about human factors i was 40 something i've been captain for quite some time and, and i remember thinking why am i learning this now this is fundamental i should have known this when i was 18. it's uh, and even when and the Nautical Institute ran leadership and management in the noughties, which we were accredited to, to, accredited to teach through you, John. Um, I put CRM into it because I didn't think you could be a manager without knowing some of this stuff, which makes, it gives you the ammo belt you're going to need if you're going to be a kind leader. And we've already established it's essential for success. No, well, no, well you made a good point about um knowing these things earlier and, and Emmanuel asked the question of how do I continue to grow starting from my academy and developing it as a leader not just any leader but a kind leader and, and I think you know the interaction um, with good people in the industry um, clearly interactions through the Nautical Institute and other professional bodies uh, is one way of doing that I just want to we, we haven't got long left and we are going to finish on time um, David um, how do you see kind leadership positively impacting on those other organizations sort of in the same space, but perhaps more um, with the seafarer seafare welfare uh, issues being considered? Do, do you see some synergy there or, or a conflict? Mm. Could, can you just rephrase that again, John? So how do I see... Mm. So the, the, this kind leadership initiative, the discussion, is there yeah. any corresponding impact on, on the, the welfare organizations, the missions to seafarers, the, the Stella Maris, uh, Ice One, um, you know, the, the seafarers um, charity and so on? Is, is there mm -hmm. some benefit across borders, as it were? Mm. Yes, there will be. Um, and I, I know those organizations very well. And, and I know they do their best to, to reach out to seafarers and, and listen to them. Um, you know, yeah, I, I can only see that the synergies, if, if, if it was adopted in, in, in our industry, then I think it would be a great, um, a great chance for those organizations, Mission to Seamen, Sailor Society and Islam to engage much more closely with them. Um, yeah, I, I, I see that as a win, um, right across the board, actually. Um, well, we, we, we look I, forward I, I to... To getting their input to the report as well and uh, you know giving some feedback on how it can maximize that that benefit as well um so ericson we're going to come to the next poll in in, in just a moment um but what i hope you've all been thinking about is not only what the uh, what the panel members have, have had to say to us today um but the question that's going to come up is about what are you going to do what does this mean for you in your job because uh, without i will come to you, john um without um that um, action um, then you know what what are we doing so we'll just go to the poll and then John Wright I'm going to come to you so uh, for those who can't see it we have 68 percent of attendee who would share the report and discuss the content of the colleague 54 percent will identify where kind leadership might enhance their role 40 percent uh, will become a mentor to junior staff or seek out a mentor for themselves and then another 48 percent commit to sharing and understanding uh, others' roles. So just to be clear, uh, because everyone can choose more than one responses, that's how the number comes up to more than 100%. Good. Well, that's the way that uh, John Wright performs all the time, and he's going to pass some uh, very quick comments now. John. Mm. Very quickly, um, this process, we've, um, especially when it comes to um, cost beneficial, cost benefits, this process is explored in detail in the CHIRP publication, Maritime Insight, which john said he would make available to you at the end of this webinar if you so choose uh, i suggest you do because it, it, it'll give you some more ideas uh, together with our uh, report 
No, thank you, John. So it is one of the questions when uh, Ericsson mentioned a questionnaire. It is one of the questions. If you are aware of that report from Chirp, it's a, a leadership insights. If you want a copy, tick the box and we'll have that sent to you. Um, it is one of our policies to finish on time. I've got a tiny summary here. Listen, it is about culture. It is about engagement. It is about communication. Um, and it's an investment into a better future, a safer future, and a more profitable future. So thank you all for sharing uh, your thoughts with us today. Thank you to uh, our audience for attending. Uh, I really appreciate the commitment on all sides, uh, and I wish you the very best for, for the rest of the day. Thank you very much.